I'm already seeing so much heat, I can't even stand it. I don't even know where to start right now. I mean, just just pick your favorite pair out of the whole thing and we'll go from there. Okay. What's going on, Shoe Gamers, and welcome back to the channel. Today, I have a very special episode for you. We are here at one of the best sneaker stores, period. This is Worm Tokyo. I know Island Boy made this, huh? So we're here with the homie Yonesi, who we met last time when we were here in Worm Tokyo. He agreed to give us an exclusive look into Worm. Yeah, Yonesi from Worm Tokyo, man. Good to have you back. Hey, man. Thanks for having us. Appreciate yeah. it. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. So how how long has Worm been around for? When did Worm first start? Uh, 10 years ago. Oh, so it's only been around for 10 years. Yeah, 10 years. Fairly new store, mm -hmm. but already making an impact in the sneaker yeah, community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love to hear that. How long have you been a part of the Worm um, store? Seven, yeah, seven years now. Oh, so you're a savvy yeah. veteran. Mm -hmm. you, you've been here for a long yeah, time. Yeah, you're yeah, seven out of the 10. Well, you've yeah. been here for a while, you know it well. So before Worm, what was the store that the owner had been using? LA Avenue. LA Avenue is LA the name Avenue, of it? Yeah. So that's where his collection started. He yeah, had the exactly. LA Avenue store. Tokyo right. is kind of, you know, like a center of the streetwear, like like you said, Urahara, right. Urahara movement and, uh, you know, streetwear sneakers. So Tokyo is a big part of, you know, sneakers and streetwear culture. Yeah. And uh, Harajuku is, uh, you know, like, center of Tokyo the heart of it yeah yeah heart of it yeah that's where streetwear was born mm -hmm. and so I, I love that the store is is in the center of Harajuku mm -hmm. and just walking around here we've mm -hmm. seen amazing stores nothing like worm <laughs> but we've seen some amazing stores in the area and yeah, it just yeah. makes sense yeah, yeah. if you are a sneakerhead mm -hmm. if you love streetwear and if you're in Japan go to Tokyo and go to Harajuku mm -hmm. or as we say Urahara. 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 There we go. Yeah. These are all the Air Jordan 1s you guys have Jordan. in the store? Yeah. So 1s to 36 or something. Oh. No. All age 8. You got them all here. Yeah, That's for sure. AJ. And these are all new, used. Brand new, brand new. All these are brand all new. All these are brand new. But you also carry secondhand sneakers, mm -hmm. things like that, so people can come and buy used Air Jordans yeah, as well. Exactly. Awesome. What's your favorite Jordan on this wall? Me? Um, fours. I love fours, man. These. Oh yeah, you can't go yeah. wrong with those. And uh, these classic. Yep. Those, I have that pair actually when they came out. That's one of the fours that I have. Oh, for real? From, yeah, from the oh, original cool. when they released. Yeah. What's your favorite Jordan of all time? Uh, of all time? Yeah. Threes. Oh, so you're a three lover. I yeah, like that. Threes. Threes, my favorite. Fours. And, uh, yeah. What's that's, your favorite? That's a good choice. Mine is the Jordan 11. That's 11. my, uh, yeah. That's yeah. my absolute favorite Jordan. It's the first one, first Jordan that I ever received. Yeah and uh, definitely the one that's been the most impactful to me. Most specifically, the Bread 11. This is this is my all time. My cousin bought me these uh, when he was in college in California. And I cherished these for a while. Unfortunately, I had a dog in college mm -hmm. who chewed the back of the shoe and destroyed them. So I never got to wear them again. Um, I wish I had a better sneakerhead mentality back in college because I would have saved them anyways, but I didn't. So I think I'm gonna need a new pair of these. So Yonesi, what can you tell me about this middle section here? Air Force Ones, 
and a in a shelf. Uh huh. With the new arrivals, like the new heat. Okay. Yeah. Yep. You got uh, Travis Scott's yeah, here. Got the reverse mochas over there. Some lost and founds. Yeah, yeah. Really cool. But yeah, I feel like Air Force One is more popular out here than you know Air Max is now. Oh, you think it made a switch? You think the yeah. Air Max is, or the Air Force One has now? Yeah, gone on top a, of the yeah, Air Max? Yeah, I guess. You know, I, I have to say from what I've seen since I've been here the last two weeks, that I've seen a lot more Air Force Ones right? for sure. Yeah, right? yeah, I think so. And yeah. it's what's interesting is the reason why I came out here was to look for, you know, Air Max Ones. Air Max Ones that I have not, you know, back home I don't have. I have the Atmos, mm -hmm. but the Atmos pack to me was is my favorite yeah, collaboration. Yeah. And I think one of the first collaborations that Nike ever did. Mm. Um, shout out to Koshima who made yeah, that, that creation. Um, but I was expecting to see a lot more Air Maxes around. Not that I didn't see them. And I think the most popular was the Air Max 95. Mm. Uh, but Air Force Ones, Air Force Ones have taken over kind the trend yeah, here yeah. in Japan, which I think is really, really Everybody, cool. Yeah. You were telling me that you have a good collection of Air Force Ones here mm -hmm. that we're gonna see in a little bit. Yeah. So make sure you guys stay tuned because I had a little bit of a sneak peek of the Air Force Ones that Worm has here in stock and okay. it's mind blowing. So make sure you guys stay tuned for later in the episode on that. So Nessie, one of my favorite shoes of all time um, and I'm a little bit biased to it because it came out in 1986 and 87 is the Air Max One. Air Max One. And one of the biggest reasons why I came to Japan was because the sneaker culture here was influenced heavily by the Air Max. Yeah. Specifically yeah. the Air Max 95. Yeah, yeah. Air Max 95. Tell me about your guys' Air Max collection. Tell me how you feel about the Air Max shoe. Okay. Well, like he said, um, Air Max 95, you know, like is a highlight yeah. of Japanese sneaker culture. Yeah, absolutely. It was huge when this came out in 1995. Yeah. It was huge, you know, like, uh, there's a story that if you wear it um, on the street mm -hmm. in 1995, mm -hmm. somebody, you know, come and take it. We'll try to rob you for yeah, it. Yeah, rob, rob. So that's how popular they were that, here in Japan. Yeah, that's how popular that was. Wow. Yeah. Jeez, who would have thought shoes would <laughs> put you at risk of your life? Yeah, the paddles. Yeah, yeah. So one of my favorite collaborations of the last few years have been the Air Max One Pada. Okay. Love them. Yeah. Absolutely love them. That's clean. Yeah. What's your favorite Air Max model? Um, yeah. Air Max 90. Yeah. Yeah, this is bacon. Good shoe, the bacon. Good shoes, yeah, classic. You know, funny story, I actually found that at an outlet okay. in the United States. Oh, okay. I got it for 90 bucks. Oh my. 90 steel. US dollars. Yeah, steel. I got a crazy steal on those. Yeah. I don't know how I found that, but that was fun. What do you feel like is your, um, your rarest Air Max that you have here in the store? That's a hard question, I know. Yeah. It's gonna be in there? Yeah, oh yeah, no, we're not going there just yet. <laughs> we can't show you guys there just yet. We're staying on the general floor. And, and I'm telling you, just here on the general floor, you're seeing heat. I mean, they got Air Max Supremes, Chinese New Year, undefeated Air Max 90s. And so there's heat all over the walls here at Worm. Not only that, you guys got some specific shoes over here that I'm just looking at. You got some June Takahashi exclusives. Yeah, yeah. You got the undercover and uh, overbreak collaboration with Jun Takahashi. Uh, he's a Japanese designer. Yeah, yeah. And uh, very heavily influenced by Fujiwara mm -hmm, and the mm -hmm. whole Urahara. Urahara, um, yeah, Urahara movement. The Urahara yeah. movement of uh, streetwear here in, yeah. in Japan. So love seeing that shoe um, um, here on your shelves. Really like that. Retro lines, you know, steam vintage. The reason why we have Nike all together mm -hmm. is because of the Onitsuka Tiger. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Phil Knight, when he came to uh, Japan, got his influence from that yeah, shoe yeah, you're right, you're and right. brought it over to make Blue Ribbon Sports, mm -hmm. which today we know as the animal that is Nike. Mm -hmm. And so if it wasn't for Japanese innovation of mm -hmm. sneaker, mm -hmm. of uh, track shoes, we wouldn't have Nike today. Yo, Nessie, we're here talking about all these Nikes and these Air Maxes, but something's been staring at me out of the side of my eye. What we got going on over there, man? What's that? 1985, man. Oh, jeez. 
So those are all 1985 all Jordans. 1985 OGs, AJ1s. Original AJ1s. Yeah. Uh, a lot of them are, look used. Are any of them dead stock in there? Used. Okay. Small pairs. Okay. No, dead stock is. Yeah. They're yeah. in the back. They're <laughs> in the back. <laughs> hey. yeah. You won't keep them out here. Warm pairs. Used pairs. Oh, well, yeah, duh. You're not going to keep a dead stock pair exposed nah, to the sun. Nah. That makes no sense. You but that. love that. But yeah. this is actually the wall that we saw. I tried to buy a pair of these shoes <laughs> last time I was here, and you were not a fan of that. You told me, nope, no. not for sale. Not for sale. And no. these are never going to be for sale, correct? No. no. I love that. So, I mean, if you guys come here to Worm, you definitely have to go see their back corner of 1985 collection. It's so impressive, mm -hmm. makes for a cool photo opportunity. And for a sneakerhead like me, it just makes me feel all fuzzy inside. Now, Yonessi, uh, we've been walking around the store. We've seen a lot of cool sneakers. You've showed us around here. But I think it's time to go down that sneaker memory lane, mm -hmm. sneaker history. Mm -hmm. Let's open up that sneaker ball. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Nessie, we made it to my favorite spot. I'm so excited to see all of these sneakers. I'm already seeing so much heat, I can't even stand it. I don't even know where to start right now. I mean, just just pick your favorite pair out of the whole thing and we'll go from there. Okay, okay. My favorite? Yeah. Mm. He said, every pair, nah. Every pair is my favorite. Every pair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, tell them what these are. Air Force Ones that uh, made for um, the team of, you know, Entourage. Yeah. Entourage. Exactly. Is that a dr uh, TV show? TV show, TV yeah. HBO series. Mm -hmm. um, uh, was supposed to be modeling the life of Mark Wahlberg mm -hmm. with Adrian Grenier and Kevin Connolly. And this shoe was specific for Turtle in the episode, mm. and then they made it for the crew, and, and that's basically where that shoe was birthed from. So just looking at some of the details, etched into the leather and the side panel of the shoe, you see Turtle's name on the top of it. And on the episode, it's most famous for, or something happened where he couldn't get, uh, where Turtle couldn't get his exclusive shoe for the show, mm. and then it, it was a shoe drop, a sneaker drop. Mm. And Turtle thought he could skip the entire line and get the sneaker. <laughs> but in that case, they told him, sorry. So Adrian Grenier, the main character, felt bad for him and had the artist of the shoe make him a special pair mm. in a gold box and everything. And they had him pick it up. And he made a specific shoe where he etched in Turtle's name and mm. personalized it for him. You see here, the, the drop was supposed to be on the show uh -huh. at Undefeated different hints of the show inside of the shoe. They went to La Brea to get the shoe, oh, yeah. and that's why you see L.A. Brea there, yeah, yeah, yeah. which is a district in uh, an area in L.A. Two right here, Yanessi, if you want to hold this one, I'll hold the other one. The 4040 Club. Yep. This is Jay-Z's club in New York. 4040 stands for an exclusive club in baseball. Mm. 40 home runs. 40 stolen bases. It's a combination of power and speed. So Jay-Z used that as the name of his famous 4040 club. On the one year anniversary in 2004, they gave friends and family the Air Force One 4040 club. Very difficult to find, very difficult to come by. And to me, so special because of two reasons. One, the Air Force One, and number two, my favorite artist, <laughs> Jay-Z, I love him. The epitome of 90s rap. Mm. So just staying with the Air Force Ones, I mean, wow. This is a Shady Records mm -hmm. M&M shoe. I mean, Shady Records is M&M's record label. Mm -hmm. And this is a shoe specific to him. I'm pretty sure that this was a friends and family release yeah, yeah. only for friends and family of Eminem. You may have seen the white pair, but the black pair is very hard to come by. Friends and family. Mm -hmm. This is a Rockefeller Records Air Force One that they initially released to give to artists and friends and family. I believe they came out with a general release a few years ago, but the original, and I'm sure this is an original, was a friends and family release for Rockefeller Records. Sure is. Insane, insane. I didn't even know these existed. Mm -hmm. 
This is, can you tell us what this is? What is going on here? I mean, off the logo alone, I know what it is, but I've never seen that. Fragment Air Force Ones. Sick. Beautiful shoe. Mm -hmm. Love the materials on them. Yeah. The Nike made this for the Chanel runway. Okay. So, um, it, it was supposed to be worn at Chanel runway. Right. But actually didn't, didn't happen. It didn't make it there. It didn't make it there. I'm just looking at the inside. So it says, thank you, Carl thank you, Lagerfield. Carl. Yeah, the, the, the designer. Designer. Designer of Chanel. I mean, <laughs> we're just looking at insane <laughs> Kanye shoes right yeah. here. Look at this, JT. They just got a whole collection here of the Nike Kanye's. Red Octobers, tan, solar reds. Stupid. Look at this. Keeping it in the music family, we have the Kanye West Bapesta. Give me like a full spin. Yeah. Wow. Beautiful shoe. Crazy. Yo, Nessie, we don't really have to talk about this one, right? Nah. There's no words to describe this shoe and what it is and what it means to sneaker culture. Probably the shoe that every single sneaker head yeah. wants, mm -hmm. but can't afford. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> this is a crazy shoe. The Nike Air Mag made most famous by the Back to the Future movie, worn by Marty McFly in the movie with the self uh, lock laces. Obviously in the movie it did that, these don't. Uh, one of the later pairs did self lock. And of course these light up. It's like, Wow, yeah, yeah this yeah, is a yeah. wow factor yeah. <laughs> sneaker. If you got them on foot, if you even have them, it's such a huge flex. And you pulled out a sneaker for me related to this movie, mm. specifically, mm. that we're gonna show you guys a little bit later in the episode. And I may just go home with that sneaker, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. But this is a crazy shoe. Kyrie, um, the NBA player, Kyrie yeah. Irving, um, once visited the store, okay. visited us, and you know, he um, got like eight pairs from us, and uh, you know, and he signed all of that. Signed, yeah. Wow, Kyrie. look at that. Shout out to Kyrie Irving. Yeah, shout out. That thing went up after all this controversy. Yep, that's for sure. Love that. And then you got a little off white right here. Uh, Takashi Murakami yep. signed this? Yep. Yes. This is crazy. Look at this. Takashi Murakami, 2018, and his famous flower that he's done on uh, what he's been made famous for. This is a crazy pair. This has no value. There, you cannot put a value on a shoe like no. This is so impressive. Wow, this is one of the cooler things that you've shown me here today. I'm <laughs> so excited to yeah. see this. The guy who sold these to us said, um, you know, he got signed directly from him. He met him personally. He met him. Wow. He must have needed some money. He must have needed a lot of money to get rid of these. And what about this Jordan pair here? Uh, do you guys know Rui Hachimura? Of yeah. course. Yeah. So he Hachimura. signed this one? Yeah, so um, yeah, he signed this one. Is Rui the only Japanese born basketball player to have a signature shoe? Oh yeah, maybe. Right? Maybe one that has had yeah, one. Yeah, I believe so. I don't believe it's the only Nike though, right? Has has an, a Japanese born athlete had a signature shoe with no, Nike? I don't know. I don't know. He's the first one. Yeah, he's the first one. Yeah. Wow, that's cool. Never seen this. These are Air Max 90. Are these like lunar or moon landings? Yeah, the moon landings. I was right. Moon landing Air Max 90s. The Bacons. I have the Air Max 90 Bacons. We pointed them out a little bit earlier. Can, can we actually grab the one of the GR pairs? Look at the OG pair. Look at the color differences in the toe box. Mm. It's definitely got a more uh, uh, lighter white or off-white color as compared to this beige color that's supposed to be quality meat. That's the reason why the shoes were actually made. 
Now there's the GR release that has the regular Nike Air Tongue, mm -hmm. and then there's the special pair, special. which is Dave's Quality Meat on the Tongue. The inspiration behind this shoe is from the Meatpacking District in New York. They made a shoe, and that's why they called it the Bacon, is a special box pair. You don't see this one. No. You have, I've only read about this one. <laughs> I've only seen pictures of it, never had it in hand, and you can tell obviously with the materials alone, it's got, it's got that aged look in the toe box, which makes it very special. Wow, very cool, very cool shoe. Love that. This, this, that was a crazy start. And there's still two other cases left. Wow, I'm blown away. I mean, you may have seen these, Travis's. You may have seen the Chunky Dunks. You maybe have seen a Jedi here and there. But have you seen a Paris SB Dunk in person? Very hard to find. Very difficult to find. And very expensive. Yep. Probably the most expensive SB Dunk yeah, there yeah. is right now. The material of this shoe was one big canvas and they cut it into all the different shoes. So no one pair of Paris SB Dunks is the same, which makes it so special and makes it so hard to find. The exclusivity on this shoe is amazing. Now this came out as a city pack with three other shoes, making it four. You guys have three of the four here. The Pigeon. Pigeon. And Tokyo. Tokyo. Just these three shoes right here is over $100,000. This one goes up to 50, 60, 70,000. Yeah. This one's up in the 20s and 30s, and this one's probably somewhere in the teens. And the only one we're missing is the London pack right here, but this is an impressive, impressive collection of SBs just in our hands right now. So like Nike did um, like art event, like white dunk that's called the white dunk okay event okay in 2004 okay and it was displayed on in the event okay clear dunk prototype wow and it looks like over time mm -hmm. it's yellow it's yellowed but yeah. it was clear clear not yellowed so whatever sock you were wearing it was going to show through yeah, yeah. But this is crazy because yeah. you only have the right foot. Only have right shoe. The right shoe. Yeah. And 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 this was a prototype. And this is made to be an art display yep. at this event. Just for art display. I'm almost 100% sure you guys will never see this shoe without coming to Worm Tokyo. Mm. I know I boy made this, huh? What the? What the? <laughs> what dunk? the? Look at this. This is the What the Dunk SB Dunk, which is a collection of all the amazing and the classic era SB Dunks. The Pigeons, the Ray Guns, the Elephants, the Supremes, the Heinekens, you name it. This has got every single shoe, uh, famous SB Dunk, smashed together into a pair of shoes and very difficult to get as well, and also very expensive. So we've heard of the Beijing, or at least I've heard of the Beijing Fragment Dunk High, but Yonesi's putting me onto some game here. In city Pack. Say it again. City Pack. Say it again. City Pack. This is the City Pack <laughs> Fragment yeah. Dunk High, which came out in three different cities, or three city iterations. Tell us about that one. New York and London. And I'm holding the Beijings right here. And something cool about them, they're all different color blocking on each shoe. Which means the colors are flipped. Even this one has two separate colors. It's a pair. Crazy. Heard about this pair. Didn't know about the City Pack. Yonesi's putting me on. Worm's putting me on. So come here, get some exclusive kicks, and get some sneaker knowledge. Now this is a pair that I do want to highlight here. This is the Flom for love of money. The other one has the O&M on it. And it's basically different iterations of money printed all over the world within the base layer toe box 
and the base basically the entire base layer of the shoe very rare very expensive shoe as well the flom sb dunk high so, you see summit uh-huh summit is um japanese hip-hop record label oh cool yeah and um do you guys know fujirok festival yeah like, i've uh, heard of it uh kendrick you um did uh like a show like a uh, fly lego five years ago. oh okay it's kind of big festival yeah. music yeah. festival yeah. in japan okay and artists some artists from summit mm -hmm. um did the show mm -hmm. at the festival okay so adidas made these only for the artists oh from wow the label. wow and only like uh uh i i Maybe I was wrong. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, but I'm like two people can get the shoe. Oh wow! At the event, at the festival. Ooh. Oh, uh, so they only one or two. Only one or two people were uh, that can. were not artists were able to get the yeah, shoe. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it was very exclusive, like basically impossible to get for the public. Basically impossible. Wow. That's pretty cool. Just for the artists. I love hearing stuff like yeah. this. This is great because this is unique to the Japanese sneaker culture. Yeah, we would yeah, have yeah. no idea about this back home. Yeah. And very, it's your and it's your two favorite words, huh? Japan, exclusive. exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to JT behind the camera. <laughs> Love that. Love that. I mean, Game. Really Do you know what these are? No. Okay. I rarely take my shoes off for people to show them, but Yonessi, because you opened up your home to us, mm -hmm. I'm taking off my shoe for you. What's that? I want you to take a look at them. I want you to take it all in. These are a sample oh. pair of shoes. You already saw the name, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. You saw it, right? Oh my God. You know who that is? Yeah, of course, man. Yuto Horigome. Yeah. Who's Yuto? Oh. Tell them who, tell them who um, Yuto Horigome yeah, is. like skateboarding, um, you know, most famous skateboarder in Japan. Yeah. Like gold medalist. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So why do you have these? <laughs> <laughs> why do I have them? <laughs> Whoa. That's the reaction I like to see right there. That's why I get this crazy. Page. So you're probably the first person in Japan who has seen that shoe and actually touched it in hand. Mm -hmm. And one of probably a few people that have them in hand. I don't even know if Yuto has them. What better place to debut wearing my Yuto Origomi than his home here yeah, in Tokyo? Yeah, it's crazy. That's pretty wild, huh? Yeah, it says wow. here, it says Osaka. Yeah. So these, do you know when these came out? Um, Early 2000s. Wow. Yeah. That's the dot ones. <laughs> Makes sense, right? The dotonburi for the octopus and the uh, takoyaki. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The takoyaki. 2008. 2008 yeah, Osaka dunk. Look how clean they are. Wow. Japan City Packs dunks. So Nagoya and uh, Osaka. Osaka. Okay. And uh, we don't have the other two, but um, uh, one is Ueno Panda. Panda dance. Okay. So Tokyo. Ueno Panda? Yeah. yeah. One from Fukuoka. Yamakasa dance. Nessie, you've just been hitting us in the head, but here you have not only dead stock pair, mm. but with the tag yep. and not even laced before mm. Jordan 85s. Wow. 85s, never worn, never laced up, and with the tag. Yeah. Yep. Do you guys have the box for these as well? Uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Hopefully, right? Yeah. Look at that with the stars crazy to find this in this condition the one in the box. look at that with the box in the back with wow the with the tag yeah. wow when you're walking around worm make sure that you look below all the shelves because you're gonna see og boxes and og pair of shoes they may not be wearable but it's still impressive to see i mean look at this you got a deteriorating sole dead stock 
Jordan 8 sitting in a box, original OG box. And that's throughout the store, wherever you look. Super impressive. Keep your eyes peeled. There's gonna be something for every single sneaker head here. Yonesi, you showed us around the entire store. You showed us the yeah. Air Maxes, the Jordans, yeah, yeah. and you showed us your guys' sneaker museum, as you like to refer to. I think there's only one way that we could end the sneaker exploring part of our segment. Okay, let's Any guesses? Oh, <laughs> Tokyo. <laughs> T23. T23s, the Tokyo Jordan 5 T23s. Mm -hmm. Such a highly sought after shoe. Mm -hmm. Anybody who sees this shoe knows exactly what they are. And as a kid, I remember seeing this shoe and thinking, man, I can't wait to go to Tokyo one day <laughs> and to be able to explore the city. And here I am, seeing this shoe in hand, sitting in Harajuku, mm -hmm. in Tokyo, mm -hmm. in Worm, yeah. holding yeah, yeah. the infamous mm -hmm. Tokyo T23. <laughs> I think it's time to go shopping Okay. Now. You got something for me? Yeah, I got something for you. Let's go check it out. Yeah. Had Yonesi go to the back and look for rare shoes that you cannot find or are difficult to find in my size specifically, he pulled out a bunch of shoes that we look through, Dunks, Jordans, you name it. But I picked out two pairs that for me resonated. 2015 release Nike Bruin, which was released at Select Nike Labs. These guys are the Marty McFlies. And you look at them and you're like, okay, that's just a regular Nike Bruin shoe, a regular Nike white and red shoe. Not this pair. If you notice, there's no Nike Air on the back and no Nike on the front of the tongue. The significance behind that, when they made the movie, you could not have any text on the shoe. And that's the shoes that Marty McFly actually wore in it. Nike re-released and retroed them. They're hard to find. Worm found them for me and I'm taking them home with me. The second pair that I got is my all-time favorite Jordan, Deadstock, OG, released in 1996, the Jordan 11 bread. Never laced, never worn, dead stock still in the box, and I'm taking them home with me. My absolute favorite Jordan, and I get it intact in the way that Jordan intended it to be back in 1996. So happy about my two purchases. I get to take these home and share them with you guys. I got some apparel as well. They hooked me up with some stickers and that's sneaker shopping at Worm Tokyo. I know Island Boy made this. This is my favorite shoe. Where are your shoes? Wear what you like. This has been a crazy, crazy episode. Thank you to Yonesi. Thank you to Worm Tokyo. What an absolute amazing time we had here. If you are in Tokyo, come to Worm. It's an absolute must. We'll see you guys next time on Shoe Game MD.